Uh, thank you. On that, I'll call uh, the meeting of the Committee of the Whole to order for this evening. Is that coming on? No. Testing, testing. Now it is. There it is. On that, I'll call the meeting of the Committee of the Whole to order this evening, and we'll have a roll call. Bauman. Here. Berg. Here. Bonet. Here. Doyle. Here. Graf. Here. Manny. Here. Montemere. Here. Moody. Here. Perez. Here. Rinflesh. Here. Stephan. Here. Van Akron. Here. Van Der Wiele. Here. Wangaman. Here. Warner. Here. And Weninger. I would ask for approval of the minutes from our August 18th, 2003 meeting. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from our previous meeting. Are there any additions or subtractions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion as stated signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. All those opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. On that, uh, Alderman Reinflesch, I have an opening comment, and then we'll move on after that one. I'll, I'll give you a chance to speak then. Uh, first, I'd like to thank everyone for attending this evening's meeting, as well as those tuned in on TV8. Tonight, we'll hear comments from the community regarding the establishment of a fee-based stormwater management system. Our city has had its share of flooding problems, as we are all well aware. An important part of addressing the problem is the management of storm water. After the public comments are heard, we'll have a presentation by our, our Department of Public Works that will explain the storm water management proposal and its benefits to the city. Uh, Alderman Reinfleisch, uh, if you can do it quickly, then uh, I want to move into the public, let the public get up here. So in the meantime, uh, we'll let you make your comment. Actually, no comments, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm, I'm happy to see that so many, so many of the public are here to speak. However, in terms of the agenda, I would move that we actually move the presentation first before the public speaker. That way, Public Works has an opportunity to present their case, and then the, the public would have uh, the opportunity to question after the presentation was heard. That would make a more informed public. I guess my feeling on that, uh, hearing no second, second. Okay. I have a motion and a second to have the public pretension or or the presentation first. The feeling on that was to have uh, the public air their concerns so that the, it could be addressed during the presentation rather than after it. Um, I guess I would urge that we stick by the format. I was thought out in that aspect that the public would be able to air their concerns and then the, the uh, Public Works Department would give the presentation. Hopefully that would answer some of their questions at that time. So on that I have a motion and a second. Uh, and the motion is to have the public works presentation prior to the public comment period. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? No. Aye. Roll call vote, please. Berg? Aye. Bonet? No. Doyle? Aye. Graf? No. Manny? Montemere? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Stephan? No. Van Akron? Aye. Van Der Wiele? Aye. Wangaman? No. Warner? No. Six no's, nine no's. Uh, the motion passes. We will ha have the Public Works presentation first. On that, I would uh, introduce uh, Tom Holton, our Director of Public Works and Engineering, and ask him to uh, kick us off. Dave Beeble will be giving a uh, uh, Dave Beeble. Dave Beeble will be giving a PowerPoint presentation uh, on the proposed utility. If you can hand, can do the lights. Mr. Chairman, maybe you'd want to recommend that some of the people sitting here move over to that side. Probably be. There is a, a pack of papers that 
each, each page is the exact same thing that I'm going to be showing on the, on the wall. It'd be easier for the television public to see this, but if you can follow along, and we'll try to keep some of the lights on so you can follow along in your packets. In the meantime, I have a, a sign-up sheet here for speaking, and what I'll do while they're giving a presentation, if you can put your name on this sheet, we'll just call you in order to the podium so that everyone can speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Stormwater utility. What, what we're talking about here is, is really not a new concept. We, the city of Sheboygan has been active in stormwater management since, uh, I'd say, 1989 in terms of active in terms of the new philosophy in managing stormwater, not just from a quantity aspect of moving water, but also as a, as a quality issue in terms of, of stormwater, in terms of its water quality, its effect on rivers and lakes. And uh, the city has been very active in it since 1989. The stormwater utility is basically a funding mechanism to pay for, to pay for the program. It's based on, on two things. It's based on the cost of the city's operation to manage stormwater in an effective means. And it's based also upon the property's imperviousness, i.e. Its, its rooftops, its driveways, its parking lots, that directly contributes to rainwater running off from the property and, and entering into our storm sewer systems and eventually into our, our rivers, lakes, and streams. The city has had its flooding problems, as we can all remember of the flood of 1998. And lastly, we first proposed this utility concept back in, in 1997. As I mentioned, stormwater utilities charge a fee for the, direct, for, the, for the amount of impervious surface area a property has, which directly contributes to the runoff of the storm sewer system. This system of financing is equitable and fair in comparison to the current method of property taxes. Under our existing system, Residential properties pay around 70% of the cost of our stormwater management program, but only really contribute 44% of the impervious area within the city of Sheboygan. Industrial and commercial properties are currently paying approximately 30% of the cost of this program. However, they are contributing 56% of the impervious area with, within, the, within the city. This concept is, is similar to your water or sanitary sewer bill. Properties are charged accordingly for what they use or contribute to the system. In this case, the, the, in the stormwater utility example, a property owner is charged a fee for what their property contributes to the runoff. The stormwater utility would also be established and administered just as our, as, as our wastewater treatment plant is. It, it's considered an enterprise fund within the city, city's budget and is under the Department of Public Works and Common Council authority. It, it would not be set up as a separate utility such as our, our, water, our water utility, which is reports to a, a, a board of commissioners that the council elects. As I mentioned earlier, the stormwater utility is not a new concept. Many Wisconsin communities have already established these utilities in order to fund their stormwater management and infrastructure needs. And just a little tidbit, I guess, on, on our infrastructure. The city of Sheboygan has over 102 miles of storm sewers with 91 outfalls. And the outfalls is where that water eventually discharges into either a, a, a stream, the Sheboygan River, Pigeon River, our Lake Michigan. 38 of those 91 are considered major outfalls, which is 42 inches in, are, are larger. And that's important because those 38 are especially regulated by the EPA and, and the Department of Natural Resources. In addition, the city of Sheboygan has over 3,200 storm sewer manholes and close to 7,000 corner inlets and catch basins. The city's storm sewer system is constantly growing and will need to be maintained on a continual basis. 
This is not a system that is, is, is going to go away in the future, just as our water system, our sanitary sewer system, our storm sewer system is an integral part of, of the watershed management theory. This next chart, and it's probably easier to follow along in, in your pages, demonstrates this is the Wisconsin communities that already have established stormwater utilities within the state of Wisconsin. As you can see, there's the city of Appleton, town of Bellevue, village of Butler, city of Cudahy. There's approximately, tw there's 25 on here. And this was from uh, the year 2002. The, this came from the Wisconsin State Chapter of the American Public Works Association. They did a survey at, at the spring conference in 2002. I, I was at the 2003 spring conference in Madison this year, and this was the number one topic in terms of what are communities doing to address their stormwater management needs and how, how many of them were going to be bringing these online. And by far, this was a very important topic and a hot topic at the conference. And those that did not have it were all talking about how do we get this going, what do we need to do, because what's happening is with, with the state budget and their own local budget concerns, the importance of stormwater is, is being, being elevated along with the new regulations from the EPA and DNR. In order to have a stable funding source, they're looking at this concept, the stormwater utility. Our projected annual operations budget for stormwater management for 2004, and this is nine months, this is, this is on a basis if we'd start this utility April, in April of 2004, we're looking at $1,015,310. There's some administration costs with that in, in terms of engineering, the building system, uh, look, looking at uh, co uh, corrections in the building. The NR216 is the natural resources rule that mandates uh, stormwater management activities. And right now that's estimated around 32,000. We're in our third year of our, what is called our stormwater permit. And it's, it's a progressive permit. As you get further along in your permit over the years, more and more stringent activities on your stormwater management system are placed. Right now we, we're, we're monitoring some outfalls per the DNR. And in the future, we will have to do more stringent follow-up after testing of stormwater to pinpoint the sources of pollutants. The other activities are, are what's currently going on is our storm sewer maintenance account, which is 537278 That includes all of our activities within the department, such as storm, storm sewer repair, replacement of corner catch basins that are, that are in need of repair, manhole repair, those type of activities. The other activity is street sweeping and cleaning, which is $324,000 right now. And that includes our annual street sweeping as well as fall, fall leaf collection operations. Right now we have three full-time sweepers on a daily basis, keeping the streets clean and, and free of debris as much as possible. We pick up annually around 400 tons of, of debris just from street sweeping. That has to go to a landfill as per the DNR requirements. In addition, I mentioned earlier in, in the line item above, storm sewer maintenance, another activity is, is vacuuming our, out of our catch basins the debris that collects in the catch basins. That's what they're designed to do. They're to, designed to collect some of those heavier sediments and cigarette butts and non-floatable type of material prior to getting in and going into our rivers and streams. And that has to be cleaned out periodically. And averaging there, when we first started, we, we haven't done it for some time, but when, when we got into it and under the mandates, the first year we had close to 600 tons of debris that we picked up. Now we're averaging close to around 250 tons annually. Last component of the budget is, is based on the $3 per month for a single family residence. The balance left over from the operations being covered is what would be contributed to our capital improvements program. And that's estimated right now at 100,000, 32,000. As I mentioned, proposed start is April 1st of 2004. That'd be after the first quarter in 2004. Currently uh, with our study that is, it, it is estimated to, the city of Sheboygan is estimated to have a total of 40,000 to 45,000 
ERUs, what is, con what is considered an equivalent runoff unit. Based on a nine-month budget of operations of 1,015,000 with an additional 132, uh, 132,000 for capital improvements, that divided by our average of 42,500 equivalent runoff units, this equates to a nine-month cost of $27 per ERU, which would cost the residential property $3 per month, or $36 annually. An example, a single-family resident would have one ERU, equivalent runoff unit. At one ERU, that's $3 per month, or $36 annually. Now, other than single-family residents, what, what the system looks at is actual square footage, then, of the impervious area. The, the single-family residences are, 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 are taking a statistical sample of all the single-family residents throughout the community and averaged, and the average single-family residence impervious area is 2,215 square feet. Now this is an example of a, of a tax-exempt property of a church that has 61,197 total square feet of impervious area. Divide that number by the 2,215, and they have the equivalent of 27.6 ERUs. Or in other words, they contribute, or they have enough impervious area of approximately 27.6 homes. That's what their runoff is. So you would take that 27.6 ERU multiplied by the $3 charge, their monthly charge would be $82.80. Or their annual costs would equate to $993.60. Another example is a commercial property with its own parking lot. Uh, in this example, this commercial property has 59,308. Uh, square feet of impervious area. Take that number divided by, once again, the 2,215, which is your single ERU factor. That equates to 26.8 ERUs. Once again, this property commercial with its rooftop and its parking lot is the equivalent of 26.8 homes contributing runoff to our storm sewer system. Therefore, you multiply that ERU factor times the $3 charge their monthly charge would be $80.40 per month, or an annual charge of $964.80. Obviously, the, the larger facility, the more impervious area, the more square feet. Here's a larger, and this example shows a larger industrial facility located in the city's industrial park. It has a total of 442,608 square feet of impervious area. Now take that figure divided by the 2,215. They have equivalent of 199.8 rounded. Let's just round it here for discussion purposes. They, 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 that property with their parking lot is basically the, the equivalent of 200 homes in terms of its runoff. As a result, multiply their ERU factor, their, their number of ERUs times the, the, the single charge of $3 their monthly charge would be $599.40 a month, or $7,192.80 annually. And these are, these are examples. I want to, be, we want to be forthright with the council and the, and the public. Uh, when we still have to verify the square footage. This, this data that we had was from 1997. Uh, so we tried to pick examples where properties did not increase much of their, their area in that time. City Hall. City Hall would have to pay. It's just like a utility bill, just like the water and sanitary sewer. So City Hall, even though it's, it, it doesn't pay taxes, it does have a water and sewer bill for the water and sewer uses. In this case, City Hall has 16,147 square feet of impervious area. This equates to 7.2%. 29 ERUs, or 7.3. So it, City Hall is the equivalent of 7.3 single-family homes in the community in terms of its runoff contribution. As a result, at $3 uh, times that 7.3, we're looking at $21.90 a month, or $262.80 annually. 
I guess in summary, according with our city finance director, Rich Gebhardt, the st a stormwater utility fee of about approximately $1 per month per equivalent runoff unit, the ERU, would generate approximately $500,000 per year for, for stormwater management. The city tax levy would have to increase an additional 2.7% to fund the same $500,000 to the program. Taxes for a residential property valued at $83,000 would increase $23. Given the competing forces within the budget, the storm sewer system will need to have its own funding source to be able to meet the daily and future demands. The timing of this discussion is now even more important. Not only is the city of Sheboygan facing mandates to implement a comprehensive stormwater management system, the state budget will have serious implications on the department's ability to meet these needs. As I mentioned, implementation could begin April 2004. And I guess prior to closing, I guess lastly, we mentioned some of the, these regulations and, and uh, in terms of the water quality in, in stormwater management and, and runoff, non-point source runoff is, is the buzzword that you might hear in the media. It's becoming more and more a hot topic, especially with beach closings. And stormwater runoff has been documented and linked to, to poor water quality. Um, you can take our, our beaches this summer. We've had to close the north and south beaches close to a dozen times this summer. Terry Andrew was even worse. Uh, the, the public is more conscious, uh, uh, conscious of, of, of water quality and these issues. And with, I guess, the city's inf the investment in our lakefront, our riverfront, and our infrastructure, it only, it only goes to prove that stormwater management is, is even more critical now than ever. I guess lastly, what is our alternative that we're facing? The department could continue to fund, I guess, its stormwater management program via the property tax method. However, with the general fund being further and further constrained, stormwater management is, is going, to need to be, going to be need to be funded in the future and it's only going to cause future concerns in, in that budget. This way, with this, with this system, it, it removes that from, that from those constraints, and we can concentrate on, on our flooding issues as well as our water quality issues. And I guess with that, Mr. Chairman, um, this presentation's concluded. Uh, since we changed the format a little bit of our meeting in the way it's going, I thought that uh, at this time, if the older persons have any questions on the presentation that they would like to ask, now would probably be a good time to ask them, and then we'll move into the public uh, input section. Yeah. Alderman Van Akron. Uh, Mr. Whoops. Mr. Viva, uh, a two-family house. How is that rated? Two two families will we'll have a percentage of an ERU. They won't have the one full ERU. So I think what we decided on was 0.7. We, looking at other utilities, the way they are developed, they break it down. So each unit would pay a, a portion, a 0.7 each. And that's the same for a three-family. Then beyond a three-family, we'd measure up. Beyond a three-family, then four families on up would be actual measurement of impervious area. Higher than a single family, you're telling me. Yet uh, a double flat is a lot smaller. A lot of them do not have garages or driveways, but yet they're paying more than a single family, which is spread out all over the whole land. But we have we have a lot of two families that are side they're side by side units, so they're probably 50 percent larger uh, than a single family. Uh, and those a lot of the older two families have a much bigger footprint than a single family house too. And, uh, some of them have uh, larger driveways. Some have parking areas also. So it's, we had to try to pick an average, and that's what we had chose as 0.7 per unit for two family and three families. Don, does it answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alderman Montemayor first. Uh, 
Thank you very much. I have a question, and I assume the answer is yes, but let me ask the question. Um, our friend Blue Harbor, they'll be paying the fee, right? Or will that come out of room taxes? Blue Harbor will be paying the fee. Thank you. Alderman Price. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do have a few questions here with respect to the stormwater utility. Uh, I know Dave mentioned that we've been active in managing since 1989. How were we doing it before without taxing the people additionally? Uh, we started working with the DNR. We had received over two million dollars in grants uh, to help with the system and for maintenance and for improving the system, but that money, for the most part, is dried up. It's gone. Okay, this thing has been tried at least twice to go through, and it didn't. How are you doing it then? Still being done. Stormwater management is still being done. I, I think the answer is that it's, it's coming out of the general fund at this okay. time, stormwater management okay. costs, basically. That's correct, yes. Correct. Okay, thank you. And then on stormwater utility, if it's not a utility, why are we calling it a utility? It, it won't have its own individual board of commissioners as a... I think it's just a, a name. It's a storm, stormwater management program. Okay. The... Um, On stormwater utility, again, the second page here, stormwater utilities charge a fee for the amount of impervious surface area a property has, which directly contributes uh, runoff to the stormwater uh, sewer system. If we have a house that's worth $60,000 and a house worth $250,000, they're going to pay the same because they're residential. Right? If they're single family, and yes. Pay the that's same. correct, yes. So the guy that doesn't have a real big house, doesn't have a lot of impervious surface, is going to pay regardless. Generally, the larger houses, they have a larger lot. You're looking at the outskirts, so percentage-wise, it's probably not too different, the percent of impervious area versus vegetated area. Okay, but my district has a lot of the older homes. They don't have a lot of rooftop. They don't have a lot of pavement. They don't have a lot of dry. In fact, some don't have driveway. Their homes are appraised at $70,000, $60,000. They're going to pay the same as a $200,000 home, right? That's correct. Okay. Uh, The annual operations budget stormwater management, I see that administration here is 121500 The last report we got last year was 42000 How did that come about? It's a slight, a huge increase. The, the, the one that fell the, last time, baby. The, the difference is that the part of the inf information, we did not have some of our, our engineering costs that we currently go out right now for, mm -hmm. as well as we didn't have accurate figures in terms of what would the billing cost, because what the, the proposal would be this would go on the water bill. And to add that to the water bill, it's, there's going to be a fee charged from the water utility for them to administer that. We give them the database, but yet they still have to print it out and send those out for us, and accordingly we have to pay them for that service. So if administration increased dramatically just from last year, does that mean we can expect that increase every year? I, I, we hired a, uh, basically a stormwater engineer. That's all he does is design of our storm sewer system. Uh, before, we used to consult out, and we paid a lot more for it. And that wasn't even in uh, the administration fee in the last time we looked at this. Now we have a person in that position. That's pretty much his sole, his sole job is for designing storm sewers. Okay, and finally, my last question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, proposed start of April 1st, 204 here. The last handout I got was 265 a month. Where are we get $3 for it? That's an increase already with our... I think they're using... We already, uh, all the employees are using $3 as, as, as a, a figure that you can round up easily. And actually, in strategic fiscal planning, $3 was, or finance and public works, $3 was a recommendation that's coming to the council, but it has not been passed. The $2.65 was the original fee, and $3 is something that you can say is $36 a month very easily. Was that passed it's, at the committee? $3? It's, been, it's being sent to council. So we're already approving a rate, so we haven't even passed No, we have not improved a rate at all. There's no rate, no rate approval at all. That's an incorrect statement. Okay, no more questions. <coughs> Alderman Vanderwilly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have a question for Rich Gebhardt, if, if I may. Would you be able to explain um, why the stormwater fee would benefit the taxpayers versus 
just putting it on the tax bill? What, how would it benefit the taxpayer? Well, I think uh, Dave stated here, I think a couple of times, to the, the concept here of the utility is that you will have a uh, continuous stream of revenue to go for this purpose. Um, as Dave mentioned, there's concern about state revenues and the impact on our operational budgets. Uh, if the stormwater uh, appropriations stay within the general fund budget, obviously they're going to be impacted the same as all their departments. They're going to be receiving some kind of negative adjustments, which means less is going to get done. They're going to have a harder time to meet the state requirements in R216 and all those requirements that they have to meet. Um, that, that, I think, is the main purpose of it and, you know, of concern here at this point. If we have a utility set up and have a continuous stream of revenue, they'll be able to continue to do the job that's required. Um, obviously, you know, I guess it's a question for the council here how we handle the transition. If we put this as a separate utility, the appropriations will come out of the general fund and be segregated into a separate fund, and those revenues that come in will obviously be part of that fund. Um, you know, at that point, there is, you know, it gives additional capacity to the general fund to assist it in some of the impacts that we are receiving here right now in the way of um, decreases in shared revenues and transportation aids, and increases in uh, pension and health costs. Um, but that would be a separate decision that the council would have to make and how, how we go through that transition. Thank you. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to add to that, also um, the stormwater fee or tax or whatever you want to call it is um, will be paid by not only um, the property owners but the nonprofits as well as the um, uh, tax exempt properties and so forth that are not contributing to our general fund right now. So, um, but Dave, can you touch on a little bit more about the street sweeping because? I've heard a lot of, of, of concern about $324,000 for sweet street. For street sweeping, seems like an awful lot. And um, is that something that's mandated by the DNR? And um, what, what's the purpose of that? It, it is mandated. And we have to remember we have 200 miles of streets within the city of Sheboygan now multiply that times two, 200 miles, because you have to do each side of the street. So you have 400 miles to do the city in one, one loop. Uh, we, like I said, we have three full-time people, three machines, including the debris that they pick up. There's disposal costs for that debris. Included in the street sweeping budget is, is the fall leaf collection program as well. And uh, on average, I would say we're picking up, uh, you know, between what we get at the drop-off site and and on the streets, um, I, what we pick up on the streets is close to 4,000 tons of, of leaves during that, during that season. Uh, we, we average right around with yard waste and leaf collection through our, through our drop off sites, right around, I want to say, six to 7,000 tons of, of yard waste debris that, that we collect annually. And a large majority of that is, is the fall leaf collection. And obviously, that's, that's a concern uh, with the DNR. They, we, we have to sweep the streets no matter what. And uh, right now, I know there's concern with, with raking the leaves into the street and the concern of that. <coughs> but if we don't pick it up that way, our, our, our equipment's set up to do that in the most efficient and effective means. If we don't pick that up, that, that, that debris gets into our sewer system, gets, in, gets into the, 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 the debris, gets into the the streams and that and decays and, and, and is another source of, of, of pollution that the DNR calls, which is bio, uh, biochemical demand. So uh, there, there's, there's issues with the leaf, leaf, leaf collection program, but that, that's where the majority of the costs with that program lie. Um, what, another question that I have is regarding, um, I received several calls from uh, people on, that are at the trailer courts and um, asking, are they going to be given consideration because most of their trailers are um, um, 70 by, by 60 or something like that? Um, will they get charged the same ERU that um, a single family home or, or because, you know, the other night at, at public, a joint committee meeting of public works and finance, 
a, a rate of three dollars was was proposed to be sent to the council. Now, that has not been approved or anything, and that's a, a different discussion completely as far as whether we should have stormwater management system or fee in, in place, um, or the um, or uh, the amount we should charge is, is something that's going to come <coughs> at a later date. And there will be an opportunity, I'm, I hope, that uh, the council will have some input into looking at these ERUs as well as the rate and saying, well, we think it should be this and we think an ERU should be determined like this, or am I not correct in that? Well, yes, we, and, we, and right now, I guess what we have before us is an ordinance that has some of that data in there. Right now, we, we're, we've proposed mo mobile home courts or manufactured homes to be considered one ERU, same as a single family resident. Uh, we based that decision after some discussion internally with our, the consultant that we dealt with and staff is that their, their developments are, are compact, more so than a single family residence which has more green space. So they're more compact. Uh, granted they have a smaller ERU or, or square footage in terms of runoff, but they're, they're compact. They do have uh, driveways, they do have storage sheds and therefore we, we, we determined is to go with a one ERU. Now, so I'll be honest with you, some communities go with a half ERU. Some communities go with a .7. And that, you know, I, is out there for debate. I, 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 it's, I'm, we're not, it's, it's not, a, not exact science when it gets to some of these, what I call gray areas, such as the mobile homes or the multifamilies. Uh, it's, it's set up on each individual community's characteristics. When you start looking at the community as a whole, looking at these areas, uh, you got to remember now one of our mobile home parks is, is in the Fisherman's Creek watershed and uh, they had significant flooding in that area. We've, the city has invested um, some major capital expenses upstream from there with the green wing ponds in terms of trying to slow that runoff coming from the west into that area. So. Uh, even though they, they don't have curb and gutter, they don't have storm sewer, they benefit from the general stormwater management principles that, that the city has enacted. Just, just in that instance, we spent uh, $2.5 million upstream of Indian Meadows. One other question I have, Mr. Chairman, uh, and that is um, regarding um, if this council so chooses, first of all, if we implement the storm water system um, and we so choose to to take a look at the ERU factor or the the cost or for instance if we'd like to do something all by square footage how much additional would that cost as far as um, working your numbers up are you you're asking a question for like the single-family residences yeah I, well, I the, it's my understanding, working with our consultant and looking at other stormwater utilities, the way they were developed, the, the single family resident is, is based on an average square footage throughout your com community. And yes, you're gonna have some, as Alderman uh, Perez has stated, is that you're gonna have some homes that are gonna be very large and pay the same rate as some homes that are, are very, have a very small footprint. But on average, on average, there's, there's a, a large majority of the homes that fall within that statistical average. Now, if we went on an individual basis, I think then you, those administration costs that you see that are 120, 1,000 right now, I, I would have to say they would increase significantly in terms of trying to go out there, measure every property. I believe there's over 17,000, close to 18,000 parcels within the city of Sheboygan. And to measure each one individually and develop a rate um, would take an, uh, a extremely long period of time and, and be very expensive. Who is our consultant? When we did this, they were, they were called Rust. Now they're Earth Tech. Thank you, Alderman Groff. Alderman Vander Willey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, what are we looking at for startup costs to, to start this whole process? 
we, we had a consultant. The fee was forty forty five thousand uh, dollars. They would go through and help with the billing to get that set up. They go through and check all of our data, uh, offer aerials, which we already had flown this year, to uh, uh, come up with the impervious areas for all the non residential uh, properties. Uh, the water utility for the billing was thirty thousand a year, roughly. So that. The best that I can tell what would be the two startup costs, the forty-five thousand for the consultant and uh, roughly the thirty thousand for the water utility for the billing. Thank you. Alderman Ryan Fleisch. Uh, thank you. Two points. Uh, first, uh, clarify if you will. Again, we don't have a rate established per se right now. Say one does get established, say the utility does get established. Uh, down the road, ten years, looking at some kind of utility rate hike. Explain the process involved. Who sets the rate? Who approves the rates? How does that go down the road? Uh, council would ultimately set the rate. So I'd assume that would be a recommendation through public works establishing the rate for the following year. But say in the future 10 years down the road, if we need to change, does it still come through the council for a rate increase or decrease even? Or I, I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. I, I think the council would have to change yeah. it then, Alderman Ryan okay. Fleisch, it, the way it's it, done, because it would. Uh, that's it's not the public utility commission or anything in the state. It's strictly something we have control of here. Yes. Yeah. It, it would yeah. be very similar, exact, basically exactly the same as we do with our wastewater sewer system. It, it's 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 under the public works authority. They develop their budget. Then we bring it to the public works committee for review, and then it comes to common council for for passage. Second point. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm glad, first of all, to hear that we actually maintain the control here versus someone else setting our rates for us. Uh, second issue, though, is I'm afraid that I, I think we might be getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Uh, I've had several questions about how much is this going to cost me, and the information I had last week was 265 Until today, I said $3. And, and ultimately, even if we pass the utility today, it's entirely possible that the council comes back and says five, six, seven dollars. We don't necessarily know. I'm, I'm a little concerned that when people ask me, wh you know, if, why I'm going to vote one way or the other, and how much is it going to cost me, I don't have a definitive answer right now for the homes. I would, I, I would urge that perhaps we slow down, establish the cost, know what we're going to have in the city, know exactly what we're going to have for capital improvements, and know exactly how much it's going to cost before we vote on this. Uh, thank you, Alderman Reinfleisch. Alderman Wangerman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just one simple little question. If this uh, document were enacted, where would that fee appear? Would it be on your water bill or your tax bill or what? It'd be uh, on your water bill. It'd be a third line. You have your water charge, your sanitary sewer charge. You have a third line uh, for your stormwater fee. Thank you. In partial answer to one question that Alderman Reinflesch brought up, uh, the, committee, the Committee on Public Works and Finance both approved sending a $3 recommendation to the council. And uh, that we can change if we want when it comes to the council. We have complete control over what that fee is. I don't think that anyone in this room has any plans of going up to 5 or 6 or $10. And I think it is a good thing that we keep it in the council. And that's the important part of this. Rather than c creating another commission, that this common council, who's elected by the people, has the decision-making process on those rates when they, when they are raised, when they are lowered. At, at some point, that could possibly happen in the future. Not very unlikely, but could. So that's. At this time, I, I think unless the council has any further questions, uh, we would ask for public input at this time. And uh, I see Dulcie Johnson is on the list first. And Dulcie. I'd ask you to try to keep it as close to three minutes as possible for expediency. Pardon? Three minutes? As close as possible, thank you. Okay. Um, Dulcie Johnson, 1306 North 3rd Street. Uh, I would like to speak in opposition to the Stormwater Utility Fund tax. Um, I, I think you're going down a slippery slope when you start enacting new taxes. We already have a wheel tax. And I understand, I've been told, that that money is not even used for road repairs. So uh, I'm concerned about new taxes, and especially creating a new utility. We're talking about a permanent tax. And I, in looking at this budget, I really don't understand what street sweeping has to do with stormwater. 
Uh, if you add the cost of administration and the street, street sweeping and cleaning, you get $446,000 out of a total operations budget of about a million dollars. So that's, a, you know, almost half of what you're asking to collect in this new tax is going to go for administration and cleaning the streets. I thought that was a public works uh, issue. So. Uh, I understand that you're maxed out on capital improvements, so you've got to look to other alternatives. And I don't live in an area that where flooding is a problem. I've never had to deal with that, but I know it is a problem in certain areas of the city, and it is something that has to be dealt with. But I think it should be dealt with through the general fund. So what are the alternatives to the budget crisis that you find yourselves in? I think, first of all, you have to bite the bullet. You need to enact layoffs, shortened hours, unfortunately, like the library. I do not understand why city employees and other departments cannot share that burden. There's always a way to work better and smarter. And I think you also need to consider other sources of revenue. Rather than double taxing your constituents for essential services, and we've just learned that we are the 12th highest property tax city in the United States, Part of the current crisis, of course, was created by the lower shared revenues, but instead of pleading innocent to helping create the crisis, as I heard Alderman Stefan do at Monday night's council meeting, you need to evaluate your past decisions. Wages and salary increases, benefits, consultants, endless studies, properties removed from the tax rolls to evaluate to, uh, for another parking lot or park, thousands of dollars for a high-priced uh, attorney from Milwaukee to negotiate the Blue Harbor contract. I haven't heard anything about increasing fees for non-essential services, the marina, river dock, boating, boat launch fees, etc. We all know friends and family, as I do, who have been laid off under the current economy, and I think the city needs to consider that. The 2% tax increase that has been voted on by the council has been characterized by Alderman Groff as tax relief. Last year, while the cost of living increased 1.5%, city taxes increased 4%. And so now Alderman Groff misconstrues a 2% tax increase as tax relief, while at the same time advocating additional taxes of $66. We're talking $66. $36 for stormwater management, $10 for a wheel tax, and $20 for recycling, and we haven't even gotten to the garbage collection tax yet. In 1998, we paid a little over $4,000 in property taxes. In 2002, we paid almost $5,000, and we have not made any improvements, any remodeling projects to our house. Um, with the reevaluation, um, with the increased um, development, the industrial park, annexations. With a reevaluation, I would think the property taxes would be lower, not higher. And to me, that says that you're really overspending. Alderman Warner has said extraordinary times require extraordinary actions. Indeed. These are extraordinary times for your constituents, and you need to hold the line on city costs, on new taxes, new projects. You need to approve layoffs, shorten work hours. You need to sharpen your pencils, and I urge you to reject this new stormwater utility tax. Thank you. Thank you, Dulce. I did let her go on a little bit further, and, and I'm asking everyone to try to hold it to three minutes rather than limit you and, and slam the gavel down before you're, you're done speaking. I'd like to allow you to speak as much as you can, but try to keep it down a little bit. I know Dulce is quite passionate about this, as many others are, so I guess we'd rather spend a little bit more time here if necessary and let everyone speak. So the next one on the, on the, on the one question uh, for Dulce, though, that... Uh, that I would ask is regarding the wheel tax, Tom. Can you tell us that wheel tax money, is it spent on roads or used for something else? The wheel tax money uh, was established 12, 13 years ago where $10 a vehicle, 75,000 went to bridges, the balance went to resurfacing, which very little bit, but it was typically around $250,000. Uh, now it's down to $6 
uh, a vehicle right now, which is, generates about $200,000 uh, that goes towards our street paving program right currently right now. So it does go through streets. I just wanted to clarify that. I know that we are limited on how we can use those funds, and, and, and I, you can't just put them any, any place you want. So clarification. Next person is uh, Jim Van Akron. Alderman Groff. Thank you. Um, may I ask a question? Um, Alderman, or, excuse I'm, me. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Dulcie. Okay. Um, Dulcie, um, and I'm going to be asking this of everyone, unless everybody just keeps this in mind. Um, you know, you told us certain things that we should do and, and things like that. And what I'm looking for is, okay, if we don't enact this, um, what services um, would you would be willing to see eliminated or what should we stop doing that we're doing now um, as suggestions for us to, to follow? I think I answered that. I think that um, I'm not saying that you need to cut any city services, although city services have been cut. We used to have our refuse picked up at the curb. Now we have to haul it down to recycling. Now we're going to have to pay $20 to haul our stuff down to recycling. So I'm not saying that, that you can cut any city services, but what I am saying is that you need to consider uh, layoffs, shortened work hours, uh, other alternatives. If we do layoffs, your budget, yes. okay. if we do layoffs, if we do shortened hours, ultimately that's going to mean something is going to be eliminated. Look at what the library just did. Um, and um, right, and I'm I'm just asking what what you could suggest that that you would not. What, okay. what would you be willing to give up? I, I would ask you to consider privatization of garbage collection. They do that in other cities. I can tell you a city in Florida that does that. Uh, if they contract with the city. They pick up garbage three times a week. They pick up all the regular garbage, all recyclables, and all yard waste. Three times a week they pick up garbage, and that's contracted, okay, uh, the city I, contracts with a private collector. I guess I, if that's it, Dulce, uh, Alderman Graff, I don't mind asking the question, but I guess we don't want to get in a back and forth debate Correct. with every person, but perhaps no, as she Dulce El um, is so eloquent as it is, okay. she's able to do that. I think that if anyone else has those ideas, that would be the time. Uh, let's see here. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just just wanted to point out that, that we're here to listen to the public. I, I wouldn't want us to get engaged in a debate with the public. Uh, that may be an issue for another day, but for now, we're, I'd like to hear what the public has to say, not us. This is their time. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm asking for. I'm yeah, and I agree. And, and I agree with that. I think it's a good idea that all the McGrath got this out. Maybe we should ask it before they started speaking, but it would be nice to hear what city services you would consider unnecessary or, or could be cut back in one way or another as you speak. Uh, Alderman Doyle. I just disapprove completely. This is going to turn into a, a, an endless debate. We offered this the crowd the opportunity for public input. We should listen to that public input without one word from this part of the audience. No comments from city staff, from aldermen. Let's hear what the public has to say and cut out this frivolity. I can, I can uh, agree with that. On that, Jim Van Akron. Good evening. My name is Jim Van Akron. I live at 432 Lincoln Avenue. I support the concept of the need for stormwater management. It's an obvious, essential city need. But I have to ask you to, to, to think, what is government for? Why do you exist? What is this body for? And we all had our basic civic lessons <coughs> through our, our schooling. And basically, government exists to provide for the health, safety, and also to provide uh, public recreational opportunities for everybody within the community. Um, under our democracy, we the people grant you the authority to act for the greater good of all of us. So when you act, your act should be done for the greater good of all community and not to single out individuals to provide these basic government needs. And I, I suggest that stormwater management is a basic government need. It does provide for the health of our community, as Mr. Beeble uh, talked about earlier. It does provide for the safety of our community. 
and to charge a fee for something that is essential for our health and safety goes beyond what I think you exist for. That is your job. Your job is to protect us as a community. And we're here to support you. We have to provide the physical and the, the uh, monetary means to do that. But to single out, to charge a fee for services goes beyond what I had learned through my civic lessons. I can distinguish the wheel tax because I have a choice there. I can choose not to drive a car. I could take public transportation. I can walk, I can ride my bike, and I don't have to pay that wheel tax if I choose to do that. The water and sewer, I can distinguish that somewhat because I can choose to reduce my consumption of those things. But something like this, a stormwater fee, I have no choice. I have to pay it if I, am a single, if I have a single family dwelling. No matter what I do to eliminate the need for stormwater or create stormwater problems, I still pay the same fee as somebody who may have a 7,000 square foot house and the person who has a 1,200 square foot house has to pay the same fee as long as it's a single family dwelling. I believe it's a dangerous precedent that we set when we charge fees for these basic government services. Soon we'll be looking at fees for garbage pickup. Soon we'll be looking at fees for fire. Soon we'll be looking at other fees. And I think that is contrary to what we are here for. I want to see this. I want to see stormwater management. I understand the health effect it has for me and my family. But I think in dealing with your budget problems, this is an easy one for me to, for you to say no on. I think it's very easy because it's contrary to what you, the, your, the, the reason you exist. You have a lot of tough decisions. I wish I had some suggestions. But you know how this government runs a lot better than I do. So my suggestions would be just simple off the cuff person sitting back watching what you do on a, on a uh, kind of a casual basis. I think it would be inappropriate for me to make the suggestion as to how we can save money or how we need to raise money. But I do believe that fees are clearly an inappropriate way to raise money and I encourage you to vote no on this uh, proposal. I do want to see this addressed. I want to see these services provided, but through a fee service is contrary to everything I believe in what you, the existence of your body. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Van Akron. Uh, the next person on, on, on our list of uh, speakers is Horst Fritz Felter. Um, I reside in the first ward on Rosewood and Eisner Avenue, and it's very difficult to help our city fathers when it comes to the finances and how the city should be run because most people don't even know what's going on. And if you expect to have the public uh, help you, then we need a little more than these short little explanations that we have in the press. You're talking about a few numbers, but based on what? We don't know, really, and why can, we can make a, uh, educated, perhaps an educated guess, but we can't say anything specific, so we have to be very general, and I'm sure that most people don't like to do this. But when I came to this meeting and I saw the presentation, I said, oh, great idea. Now I'm going to pay for my syrup, and they're going to subtract an equal amount from my taxes, right? Well, not so. So we're going to have other departments come forward, and they're going to say the same thing. We need more for this, we need more for that, and you're going to pay a la carte. I don't think that's the way to go. So what can we do to help you? Since you have a problem in getting this uh, trash off the streets, you have uh, 400 tons to move. I would gladly ship in, and I do already keep my part of the street clean. You don't have to come and sweep my part of it. Uh, I would be glad to take leaves and whatever I have to the recycling thing. You don't have to pick that up. You don't need to exit crew. You don't have to do the 400 miles of travel with your um, garbage trucks and the vacuum trucks and what have you. So you can cut that out. And I believe if the citizens can save themselves some money, I'm sure we get together and we can do it. And for those that are unable to do it, let's get some neighborhood groups going and so we can help our neighbor do the same thing. Um, as far as the sewer fee, 
I figured eventually you're going to run out of money because you're making all these extensions into new areas and uh, you're not charging enough for those people that are going to benefit from these sewer systems such as Blue Harbor and many of the other extensions that happened over the last since 1955 that I have been in the city and the city has been going past Wilson Avenue and past Eisen Avenue on the north side. Our tax base got bigger and bigger, but so did our taxes. Also, I like to say what happens to the monies every time a property changes hands, the tax bill goes up to the assessed, uh, the assessed valuation, which is what you paid for the house. Like in my case, five years ago, my tax bill went up over $1,000 because that was the value I put on that house. That's what I paid for it. Now, all these monies from these property exchanges should add to our general fund. We should have plenty of money to go around, but it never seems to come up to that. So uh, I don't think if we're going to have a la carte, I'll be glad to pay for snow plowing. Every time the snow plow comes by, is fine. Every time it rains, OK, I'll pay for the for the stormwater fee. But this is nothing more than another additional tax or another way of getting revenue. So, and living on a fixed income, I'm going to have to come out here and fight for it because I don't get raises every year. I don't get any. Not like some people, three and three quarter percent. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Felter. The next person on our agenda is Dan Merkel. Dan, could you? Not the TV audience. <laughs> okay, some of you know me, some of you don't, but uh, I'm a friend of Sheboygan, and you know what that means. So it's not a question of dollars and cents, it's a question of equity. You know, you mentioned a person who has a single lot with a $500,000 house on it, pays the same as a poor guy with two empty lots saving to build a house on there. That's not fair. The second thing is uh, bureaucracy. You've got people to take care of this stuff, but you want to create another bureaucracy? Hire more people? That's stupid. And the third thing is, why not just add to the property tax? Because if you charge me a fee, Hillary won't help me. But if you put on my property tax, Hillary will help me pay that. And this gentleman here mentioned that you want to remove budgetary restraints. What does that mean? You're asking for a blank check? Enough said. Thank you, Mr. Merkel. The next person on our agenda is, uh, for speaking, is Henry Capitello. Hello. Some of you people already know me. Um, my name is Henry Capitello, and I'm here uh, primarily for the building that we, we own, Home Inc. It's on 9th and Superior. Uh, contrary to what some of the aldermen are saying, we do pay property taxes. This year we will pay $18,000 in property taxes for this year alone. Um, and I'm here because, you know, how much more do we have to pay? You're looking at now, I, I see this as smoke and mirrors. You're saying now that we're going to have to pay a fee, and this fee will eventually roll up larger and larger. You're taking it off the property taxes, which we still pay, and then we're also going to pay now another fee for basically, I'm paying for the rain that falls on my building. That's what we're paying for. And if you're looking at trying to make an effort to listen to the input from the public, I would make a suggestion that when you want public input, there's a way to get it. It's called a public referendum. If you're looking to get an input from the public, make it so that everybody can have an input, not just uh, a handful of people that do make it to this meeting. There's a lot of people that are not here that are in the city of Sheboygan that probably oppose this. And they, they're not here, but I bet you if it was on a ballot, they would, there, they would go there and they would vote for this. And they would either vote for it yes or no. And I'm thinking that if you really want the input from the general public, then you should ask for it in 
a public forum and that would be the, the way to do it. If you're looking at keeping uh, uh, the taxes and looking at making an effort to hold the line, everybody has to do it. If you're in business, uh, of course you'd like to increase and hire more people, but if you can't, you're looking at reducing salaries, you're looking at reducing staff, you're looking at, if you're uh, a homeowner, you're not going to put the siding on the house. You're not going to get uh, uh, the repair on the roof and maybe hold it off for another year. These are some of the things that the, the ordinary public does in times when they cannot afford to spend money on things that even though they really do need to, they hold and they bite the bullet. And I think that if you look at it and look hard at where you can cut, that's one of the areas that you need to look at. You, know, you need to look at how you can manage the money that you do have, manage it more wisely, and get more services out of that. Not looking at how to finagle, how to get an additional tax. Next thing you know, we're going to be taxed on the air. Are we going to have an air utility and now we're going to be paying for air? It, basically, that's what it is. We're paying for the water now. You know, this is some of the things that is so frustrating for taxpayers that everywhere you look, we're being taxed. We're being taxed when we fill up our car for gas. We're being taxed when we go and buy tires. We're being taxed when we go and buy something at the grocery store. These are all the things that we have hidden taxes. And what you're looking at doing is creating more hidden taxes for the general public so that they will pay more. And if, it, if history proves itself is that a tax is never eliminated. All you do is just keep increasing, increasing, and then you'll increase the property tax. The, 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 the last thing I have to say is the gentleman said that if you were going to increase it on the property tax, it would, it would increase by $28 for a single household. If you're looking at doing this, the storm utility, you're talking at $30. So that in itself is more tax than what you would have on your property tax bill. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Henry. The next person on uh, on our list of speakers is D. Olson. Variety is the spice of life, they tell me. Good evening, Mayor Schramm and members of the council. This past week, I learned that the city is again considering establishment of a storm sewer utility district. I realized that it was about 18 months to two years ago that the city was considering the same type of measure at which time we spoke against that. But this specific proposal was broader than the proposal currently before the council and it included the capital improvements as well. And as we saw some examples tonight of the costs on businesses, the last time we looked at it, it was double the amount and, and uh, Thomas Industries would have been paying 14,000 uh, for that same thing. Having just been made aware that this new proposal has surfaced again, the chamber has not had time to take a closer look at the proposal and would appreciate the opportunity to work with the city if a new storm sewer utility is developed. Neither my board nor any of our committees have addressed this, so I'm not speaking on this as a position from the chamber as I can't do that, being as they've not addressed that. And having just learned about it, it would be encumbering to try and call them all together. As you may recall, the chamber uh, did not support that previous proposal after hearing the potential cost for larger commercial properties that weighed in with annual fees of 30,000 for a facility the size of the Memorial Mall. Having met with Tom Holton and Dave Beeble uh, this past Friday, it seems as though the new proposal uh, will be reduced in impact based on lesser cost per ERUs and it will not include the full range of capital improvement projects. Nonetheless, they were unable to answer all the questions relating to fees and the impacts they will have on businesses. Although the Chamber is very careful regarding any type of new tax or fee during a time when spending constraints, tax reduction, 
and holding the line on any increase is the quest of the day. We recognize that Cheboygan has faced stormwater sewer problems for several years now. Thus, we understand why the city feels the need to bring such a proposal forward at this time in lieu of considerable budget restrictions the city faces. The chamber feels the largest impact of this proposal will be felt by the Sheboygan County business community. However, we do not feel it's fair to seek this proposal without consideration from the business community with regard to the fees to be assessed and the formula that will be used to assess those fees. It would be our intent to make certain that they are fair and equitable amongst the Sheboygan businesses, that all contributors to the district are participating, and that fees are not excessive, but rather realistic. Again, I was told the fee structure is not set, but boy, I'm hearing some pretty firm numbers tonight, which concerns me a little bit. It would also be prudent to review ordinances that may contribute to the storm sewer capacity. Ordinances that require, for example, mandatory parking lots. So you force businesses to create permeable spaces. Perhaps some of that needs to be reviewed and taken a look at. The chamber has been advised that action taken tonight by the Common Council would be to adopt conceptually the establishment of a storm water sewer district, but that the actual fee structure of the formulas for it remain open to consideration by the, by the council. If this is passed, as stated, the chamber would like to be involved in the development of the structure for the district, its fees, and the formulas. We believe it would be fair to take the information once established back out to our chamber members via a few informational input sessions prior to formal council adoption. We understand the utility is proposed to start April 1, 2004. If it is to start April 1, it is likely you are desirous of getting it into the current budgeting process. Given the need to act quickly, we still believe there is time to allow for our involvement as well as getting further information out to the business community. I'm a firm believer that it is easier to garner support for an effort if those impacted fully understand the serious nature of our stormwater problems and the related costs to address the need to maintain, protect our community from stormwater flooding that carries its own costs on business as well. Our request tonight is not to encumber moving forward with a district, but rather to develop a district that is acceptable to the business community. And I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Thank you, Dee. Uh, the next person on the list is Ken Klein. Good evening, everyone. I uh, appreciate this time that you've given us to talk. Uh, I find it interesting that no one has brought up the fact yet that you're calling this a fee and that you're not calling it a tax. And the reason why I say that is because as a, as a member of a local 501c3 operation, that all these tax exempt facilities exist for the good of the people of this community. And I'll give you an example. I'm not gonna tell you the name of the church that I go to, but I know that in recent history, 10 to 15, maybe perhaps 20% of the congregation have been laid off and taken significant decreases in their annual income. And they've had to make major changes in their life. Some of them even have to change their houses, and et cetera, et cetera. We all know this. But what I'm saying is we come together and we help these people out financially, medical costs, uh, any cost of living. We're there to help, and I, I believe almost all 501c3 organizations are there to help the people that are hurting in the community. They do it out of love from their heart to help these people. And my suggestion is, and I appreciate it, and I wish you would call this a tax and put it before the people as a referendum. And uh, I just want you to know that the body of Christ that I happen to belong to, we pray for our government, our local government, our state government, and our federal government. We appreciate what you guys are doing for us, but we sure do want you to not, not just call this a fee and not put it as a tax. It's just, it's just not right. We're there to help other people, especially the people that are hurting the most. Thank you. 
Well, I, I do. I would like to say one other thing. You talk about talk about how can you cut back? I have a history as a master mechanic in heavy equipment. I can hear these diesel engines out here idling. Okay, we got multi-ton vehicles out here that get somewhere between eight and maybe, if you're lucky, 11 miles per gallon. If you got to do a, a set of brake jobs on one of these buses, that all they do is hit the brakes off and on all day long, cost at least 10, if not 20 times more than if you had a uh, a one and a half ton vehicle out there that holds 15 people. And now I understand that they have to be handicap accessible. If we have people in the community who are handicapped and, and who do need that accessibility and public transportation, I have, I have come from a community who practiced, who had one or two vans set aside and the people who were disabled that needed transportation could make a phone call and that one and a half ton vehicle with that lift could take them somewhere. But these guys, I've lived in Sheboygan for 10 years after my military career. I can't help but see a, a, a bus driving around town with three people on it. I mean, that's, that's an average thing that I see. I've seen buses with one or two people on it all the time. Why do we have multi-ton vehicles out here that are, by the way, the emissions are gonna be jacked up on those guys too. And those buses are only gonna become more and more expensive to keep those things running. There are so many one-ton vehicles out there that hold 15 passengers on them, and you don't have to have all that noise running out there. You don't have all these diesel bills coming in and 10, 20 times more for repair bills. So I thank you for your time. Well, thank you, Mr. Klein. And we have one more speaker tonight, and that is uh, Chief Mark Zier. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the committee to hold. I'm here in twofold. Well, number one, I'm the president of the Wind Point the Condominium Association located out on Wind Point Court around 40th and Main. Uh, we do have a claim against the city on a water, uh, stormwater damage that's uh, been uh, there for a few years. There's been no action on it. Uh, the residents there, especially one unit, is uh, very close to being eroded away. Uh, I'm here to urge you to support some type of movement to, uh, in, you know, to include monies so that these projects can go forth. And 17th and National, I know, is our previous address is very close to that house. I saw the flood there firsthand, and I, I, I know that there's projects that have to be done. Infrastructure in the city is very important. Um, it's my job as a fire chief, I have to tell you, in my last 31 years, I have had an unfortunate experience of helping people. I love to help people. Unfortunate experience is helping people in floods and seeing the disaster they go through, what they lose. It's a citywide problem. Everybody has to contribute. I believe it's a uh, situation that has to be addressed. Uh, monies are tight, but then again, you're put in these situations to, to do best for the city. Legislators in, in Madison don't have referendums on everything. They have to vote. You have to vote in the best interest of this community. It takes big shoulders sometimes to make a decision that helps the city in the long run. Yeah, times are tough, but that's when the tough get going. And I urge you to support uh, some type of support for the water, stormwater. Thank you. On that, I would ask uh, Rich, Rich Gebhardt, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I, I guess I reflect what, a lot of what Mark has, has said there. You have to really be concerned about able, able to provide the services to the community. Uh, you know, I, I guess from my standpoint, I see, you know, what is happening there in Madison, what's being coming down to all the communities. I have a real concern about the uh, standard of living, the environment that we'll have years from now in Wisconsin. Um, I think the uh, stormwater control is, is a real meaningful situation uh, for everyone throughout Wisconsin. And you can see that in the list of the, of the communities that have already have enacted this. Uh, a lot of those communities that have enacted it are growing communities through the Fox Valley and those areas. Uh, it's, a, it's a plus for economic development. And I, I guess I would just really be concerned about, as I mentioned earlier to you, is about what the revenues will be, whether we'll have you know, any solid funding for these services in the future under uh, our future fiscal problems. So I urge you to give it consideration. Well, thank you, Rich. In that time, if the council has uh, Anything they'd like to say, now would be a good time. Alderman Groff. Um, Mr. Chairman, at this time, I'd like to uh, recommend that um, RC... Um, Alderman Groff, uh, prior to that, if, if the...
council has anything they'd like to say, or you want to make the motion we first? Get the okay. on the floor. Go right ahead. Um, I'd like to um, make a motion that our, the RC um, be accepted and adopted, and we send it to council with a favorable report. I have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Alderman Warner. Uh, I wish to make two points about the stormwater fee. First is uh, the stormwater fee will make our community less attractive as a place to live and work. The elderly and the poor cannot afford to pay the stormwater fee on top of the high real estate taxes that they already pay. Our citizens need tax relief. Some common council members claim that uh, our residents are willing to uh, pay high taxes in return for the services that they're getting, and I don't get that feedback. I get the feedback that they're saying it's time to cut. And local business and industry do not want or need more fees and taxes. I've lived here for 20 years in Sheboygan, and not one major employer has moved to Sheboygan during that time. The only reason we seem to be thriving is because our major privately owned businesses have done well in the last two decades. These businesses are owned by the Kohlers, Bemoth, Muth, Bratz, and others who are loyal to this area. It's my feeling that if one of these factories would close or move, we would not be able to replace it. We especially don't want to force factories to move overseas because of the high taxes here. In my estimation, Sheboygan is not economically competitive. And this stormwater fee will make us even less attractive to new homeowners, businesses, and industries. The second point I'd like to make is that the stormwater fee will not solve our financial crisis. The Common Council leadership would like to avoid layoffs and maintain services. I don't think that's realistic. I think it's basic economics. The city has three sources of revenue, and we have three sources of expenses if we look at it from a general point of view. Everyone knows that these have to balance out. Now, if we look at the expense side of the city budget, <coughs> it's made up of the new purchases for supplies and maintenance is one, the wages paid to employees, and the benefits. In every year in our economy, those go up. Now, if you look at the revenue side the city has to work with, we have the property taxes, which we do increase every year. We have the licenses, permits, fees. Those are irregular. We can't increase those every year. The third source of revenue is the state, and that tends to be stable, or now it's going down. Now, if you look at Sheboygan economic history, the three expenses have always gone up for equipment and supplies, the wages, and the benefits. So there's always pressure on the expense side, and what's happened over the years is whenever the city has an economic crisis, employees are cut. And if you, I'm sure if I don't have accurate statistics, but if you look at the fire department, the police department, public works, and go back 30 years, I'm willing to bet that there were a lot more employees in those days than there are now. Because the employees are getting more and more expensive. Now, two years ago, on the expense side, the health benefits went out of sight. They went up by a million dollars. So the city had to look at what on earth are we going to do to, to solve that financial crisis? So we raised property taxes. We raised every permit and fee that we could. But the state thing stayed the same. We even, on the expense side, had to control spending for supplies and equipment in order to balance that year out. Now, this year we have another new crisis, but it's the same old crisis. The employee wages have gone up. Equipment supplies have gone up. The benefits have gone up big time again, 15, 20%. Now, you look at the revenues, we're going to raise real estate taxes 2%, okay? The permits and fees, we just raised two years ago, so we really can't raise them again. This time, the state revenue is going down. So what happens? The expenses are up here, and the revenues are down here. <clears throat> so our three traditional sources of revenue are gone, so what are we going to do? Well, we have to start creating new taxes. So we create a stormwater fee that will generate a million and a half. That still won't close the gap. We're going to have to put in other fees and other taxes 
to bring it up so we can get through the year. Well, if we do the stormwater fee, will that solve the problem? No, it won't, because next year, the employees will want to raise again. The health benefits are predicted to go up 10 to 15% again. The cost of supplies and equipment are going to go up again. What's going to happen on the revenue side? It's predicted, if, unless I've heard wrong, that the state's going to cut it again. They're going to cut our revenues again. So it's going to go down. We're going to have the same thing all over again. So what are we going to do? Are we going to invent new fees, charge 20% increase in real estate taxes? No, we're in the corner. The only thing we can do is to cut the expense side. And as much as people hate to do it, there's going to have to be layoffs. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Doyle. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, last Monday, I, I made a motion that we, uh, that we hold a public session for people to give us input. I guess at that time, uh, I wasn't aware that the council was going to try to rush through and vote on it tonight uh, after this public hearing. Uh, I feel a little bit uncomfortable with that, although I'm not going to make it an issue. Um, I feel a little bit uncomfortable because I don't think that, we, uh, that we've done enough uh, to, to solicit input from the community. Um, I know the press has tried very hard to, to, put, to put it out there, but uh, even talking to people, some people don't even read the paper, so they don't know. Um, I understand that some of the business people haven't uh, had an ample opportunity to provide input either. So overall, we have a, we have a picture uh, that, that is short of, falls very short of, uh, having the, the, uh, the amount of public input that it, that it merits. And we have a monumental project being run through in such a short period of time. It's to my amazement that we're doing that. Uh, in that respect, I hope that this council will vote this, uh, this thing down. I thank you, Alderman Perez. Uh, anyone else on the floor? Uh, Mayor, if I, uh, do you want to follow me, or go I've got I've got just something to say that I've prepared, and uh, I guess first I'm glad we had this meeting tonight, and I'd like to thank everyone for attending and sharing your thoughts and concerns with us. Uh, thanks to D Tom and Dave for the presentation, and to the mayor and all the persons for being here tonight, uh, and for for the public for giving us some of their input. Yes, I do not think that there are any among us that has not thought long and hard about this issue. That is our job as a council, to weigh the issues that come before us, study the details, and make an informed decision. We do that so we can make a decision that is in the best interest of the city, not just a portion or a particular area, but the best interest of the city as a whole. I have come to the conclusion that the establishment of a storm water management fee system is in the best interest of the city of Sheboygan. We need a way to address one of the very core services cities provide to protect and enhance the lives of their people, business, and institutions. Our water department utility provides safe water for our consumption. The regional wastewater treatment plant removes our sewage and treats it to protect us and the environment. These two utilities are run very efficiently at the lowest cost possible to provide reliable service to the community. We need to do the same with stormwater runoff to protect our homes, our businesses, our institutions from costly and destructive floodwaters. That's what this is about. Again, Sheboygan has a very effective water system, a very effective wastewater system, it's time we bring stormwater management to the same level as drinking water and wastewater in how we provide the service. We are all concerned about the cost of government and the services it provides, and we should be. We also have a responsibility to try and prepare our city for the future in the decisions we make today. Each year in August and September, our Capital Improvements Commission meets to decide what projects and needs its annual $3 million in borrowing will provide. Since the flood of 98, the lion's share of that borrowing has gone to repair our stormwater system, leaving project after project and need after need unfilled, unfunded. 
it's worked out okay for the seventh district. My district, we have the Second Creek Pond and huge new storm water sewer system installed. installed. It's working very well. We have hundreds of mini sewers. The Bluff Avenue project has just been completed. The destroyed homes on Camelot Boulevard have been purchased along with other work in that area. But we still have South 17th Street and Ashland to contend with as well as many other areas of the city. I believe it is time we stop borrowing each and every year for these projects. Borrowed money we have to pay back with interest year after year after year millions and millions of dollars thus far. I think this program will help us to stop borrowing for storm water. Maybe not right away, but as it moves along. And at that same time, allow us to address our many other infrastructure needs that the capital improvements program was meant to address. Just last week at the strategic fiscal planning meeting, the committee passed a document to be forwarded to the common council asking to limit our capital improvements borrowing for 2004 to $1.5 million. Half of what we normally borrow. Why? To help lower our debt service costs. It should be made known that although this fee would be an added cost to the people in the city, we are addressing other budget issues, cutting spending in all areas, looking for efficiencies and savings everywhere, including working with city employees and departments to lower costs. It is currently projected that the city of Sheboygan's equalized tax rate will likely go down in 2004. And that shows that the many hours we are spending looking at costs is paying off. Over the weekend, while visiting my mother, the possibility of a stormwater management fee came up. My mom lives on a fixed income, and she was not happy about this at all. And she asked me why and wanted an explanation. And this is what I said. I said, Mom, right now you are paying for this through your property taxes. In fact, you as a homeowner are paying for 70% of the cost related to stormwater. But you as an average homeowner only contribute to 44% of the problem. That's an important distinction. I told her that the only other group in the city that pays is the business community. They pay 30% of the cost of our stormwater management while contributing, along with all properties that pay no property taxes, including the city, to 56% of the stormwater problem. So residents pay 70% of the cost while creating 44% of the problem. And businesses pay 30% of the cost while creating 56% of the problem. And that also includes all those who pay nothing because they don't pay property taxes. So the residents and the businesses are getting the short end of the stick, and it's not a fair system. I then explained, under this propo proposal, Mom, everyone would pay their fair share. Every property in the city pays, not just homeowners, not just business. She asked about churches, hospitals, and others. And I said, yes, they will also pay as well as the city of Sheboygan itself. I said it would be just like the water and sewer bills, which everyone pays now. My mom agreed it was fair. She also said if she had known these details, she would have felt a little different about it. She still does not like the extra cost, but knows it's necessary. And I feel the same way. I don't like the cost, but I believe it's necessary. Necessary not only for next year, but for the future of the city. Thank you. On that, Mayor Schramm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple things I heard this evening, I don't know if I need to stand or not. A couple things I heard this evening is why we need a stormwater fee or a stormwater tax. Well, let me tell you, I don't know how many of you were around in 1998 when we had the flood and walked 814 homes and hit every home and the flood of basements, the people crying, help me, help me, help me. What can you do for me, Mayor? What can you do for me, Public Works Department? What can you do for me, Mr. Fireman? The governor was out here with us walking. And it was a sad situation. We have to keep our stormwater program together and moving forward. We have 17th and Ashland, 5th in New York, Camelot Boulevard, 12th and Parkwood, our industrial area. We need a st strong stormwater management program. Yes, and the money should go for that. The monies should go for our stormwater management city and help our 
our residents and our businesses. And I heard this gentleman back here saying, it's another tax, or why don't you just put on our taxes? Well, if you tax, not everybody pays taxes in the city. Not everybody pays taxes in the city. That would work well for some businesses, but not everyone. So that, that isn't equal either. As leaders of this city, we also have to be sensitive to our residents and our business leaders. You heard Dee Olson tonight. She spoke about that. What's the rate going to be? It's kind of two sixty-five, three dollars whatever. We do have to be sensitive. And to our residents, we have to make sure when we put a rate in place that there is a lot of discussion about their rate. I think the program has to go in place. We have to get that in place. But we may have to have another public input session on the rates. We have to get the business community in here, we have to get residents in here, and let them know what that rate's going to be. Be very fair with them. The other thing I heard tonight, and, and disturbed me a little bit, is it was brought up that we're ranked 12th in a nation. And that was brought up last week, too. But we did some checking according, and this was brought up, American Cities Business Journal, journal analysts from U.S. Census Bureau. New York was rated number one. Well, we called them and asked them to check it out. They couldn't find anything. This is what they sent us back. The city of New York is ranked number one in a nation in taxes. But Sheboygan is not number 12. Syracuse is number 12. 11 was Albany, coming from them. So I just want to make that clear. And if anyone has any information on that other ranking that I heard tonight, please bring it forward. I'd like to see that. Alderman Doyle made a point about businesses and being sensitive to our businesses. Well, Alderman Doyle and the rest of the council, Expansion Management Magazine rated us out of 329 metropolitan statistical areas out of the United States, and we ranked in the top 50. Why? We also got an award for that. Why? Because how would you like to move your business? The best place to move your business and work is based upon a reasonable cost of living, affordable housing, low crime, excellent transportation, good public schools, proximity to colleges and universities, an excellent educated workforce, low taxes. And that's what they're looking for. And we were ranked in the top 50 out of 329. I think that tells you a lot about Sheboygan. We aren't taxing our people out of the state. The other thing is, we picked up Wisconsin taxpayers. Out of 190 cities on a net tax race, on a net tax rate, Sheboygan comes in at 99th. Not at number one, not at number 12, they come in 99th. So I think we're doing our job. And a stormwater fee or tax is needed to keep our program moving forward, to getting our work done. But yes, we do have to be sensitive again to our citizens, and our business people, before we set the rate on that, we do need some discussion on that yet. And maybe we need to sit down here again with another public hearing and a committee hall meeting before we do that. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I would be fine with that. I guess I want to make one thing clear. I know on the, on the agenda, and this agenda did get out uh, right away, almost immediately after we had our last council meeting, it says action on rate and document. Well, the rate part is not there. It's action on the document which is creation of the stormwater fee system, period, with no rates involved. And I see Alderman Mont Montemayor. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, it seems very fair. I think Dave Beeble did a good job of telling us and showing us how it is very fair for every building in Sheboygan to pay um, through this utility. However, is that portion that previously came from the general as real estate tax bill going to be removed? Or are we just going to continue paying the same amount as we paid for storm sewer um, care before and then also pay for the new utility? I would ask uh, Alderman Groff, do you have an opinion on that? All I can tell you is that it's up to this council what they want to do. There will be, um, if, if this gets approved, 
and whatever the rate may, may, may turn up to be, the council has to decide what they're willing to eliminate and what they're willing to move to other areas. If they decide that that $1.5 million comes out of the, um, if it's the capital improvements budget or the operating budget of, um, of public works, it will come out. But you have to vote to do that. So um, that's all I can tell you right now. And it's up to us to hold the line and make tough decisions, which is a start tonight. Thank you, Alderman Groff. Alderman Doyle. Yes, I don't like to speak a second time typically, but I can't let this go by. The, the message is being given to this council and to the public that this stormwater fee is going to correct the problems at Ashland and at these other places around town where flooding has occurred, that this money is going to be used to correct those problems. It isn't. This money is going to be used for administration, permit mandates, storm sewer maintenance, street sweeping and cleaning. It's going to generate, according to this sheet, in the first year, $176,000 towards capital improvement, which would be Ashland and uh, something. Uh, at, the way I see it, that's about 30 years of stormwater maintenance fees before we would have enough uh, to repair the Ashland thing. In order to repair Ashland or any other thing, you're going to have to raise the stormwater fee to at least $4.50 or $5 uh, per month. Uh, thank you, Alderman Doyle. I'd like to have Tom respond to that uh, issue. We had a lot of discussion on setting that fee, and we would have hoped to have a higher fee to cover more of the capital projects we can take care of the 17th and Ashlands. Uh, we'd been out there in that flood of 98 and the flood uh, in 99. Uh, we were out there in this last rain we had a couple weeks ago, making sure they were okay. Uh, once you establish a revenue stream through this utility, you can do revenue bonding to help with the larger projects. That's very important. Uh, and I think that would go a long ways for these people at 17th and Ashland, 12th and Parkwood, uh, Camelot Boulevard, 21st and Salmon. We have probably uh, 11, 12, 13 million dollars in projects we have to take care of yet. Uh, nobody wants to be flooded. We can't, these projects don't drop out of the sky. It takes time to design them and to fund them. Uh, to date, we've probably spent uh, 10 million dollars on certain areas, but we don't have that money coming in anymore uh, through the capital improvements program. Things are tight. We know that. Alderman Va Vanderwilly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a question for Tom. If we pass this proposal, how quickly will those areas be fixed? Just on a guess. 10 years, 15 years? I. I think Rich might be able to answer that better. We asked him that question in staff, but I think we'd have to have at that $180,000 probably uh, three, four years of that revenue coming in to before we could go out uh, for a revenue bond. Say it's five, that's $5 million for 17th National right now is what the estimate is. If it stayed at about 180000 a year in all the future years, uh, you could only borrow probably about $1.5 Maybe a 20-year bond, um, and that's all that that would support. In order to get up to, um, you know, a five million dollar issue, you would have to be over probably half a million dollars a year for capital projects for debt service. So you're probably looking at a rate of 375 to towards four dollars to be able to support that level of projects. On that, uh, Mayor Schramm, on that, uh, I think we're ready for a vote. Sue? Mike? I think this vote is to accept and adopt that document, correct? Right. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? No. Graf? Aye. Manny? Montemayor? No. Moody? Aye. Perez? No. Rinflesh? No. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweely? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. 
Warner. Aye. Four no's. Eleven, yes. Uh, I don't know if we're on or not. We'll have the mirror and I'll set the call for me. We'll call the meeting to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Hearn? Aye. Here. Tony? Here. Doyle? Here. Groff? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Still here. Greenfleisch? Here. Stephan? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderbilt? Here. Swangeman? Here. Warner? Here. Winninger? Quorum's present. Excuse me. Ex excused. Quorum's present. present. Okay. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and, and um, filed and that the, um, ex excuse me, accepted and adopted and the substitute general ordinance be put upon its passage. Okay. Move to second that the uh, communication be accepted, the committee report be accepted and adopted and the substitute ordinance be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, will you call the roll, please? Berg? Aye. 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 Roth? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? No. Moody? Aye. Perez? No. Greenfleisch? No. Stefan? Aye. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I have to make some corrections. <laughs> ben Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wanderman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Eleven eyes. Motion carried. And that's the same vote that came from uh, committee to hold just a few minutes ago. So, move to second adjourn under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? 